Man, these things look nice, don't they? Welcome back to the second episode of the JK One Ton Swap video series, guys. Ben from JK Gear and Gadgets, and I just spent the past two days knocking these axles out, man. Grinding and grinding and grinding. A ton of work just went into all these, and I am extremely happy with the outcome. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys how to prep these axles and get them ready for the next step of the build. I'm not going to lie, it's a ton of work, but in the end, it's a great result. I know it's going to be an extremely long video, probably around 32 minutes. Uh, I wish I could make it shorter, but there's a ton of info I need to pass. This is probably you know the most strenuous portion of the axle build. So there's a ton of tips and tricks in this video on how to prep these. Also show you how to remove the, uh, the carrier and ring gear out of this 14 volt and really prep it uh, to make it easier to go back in when we are ready for the re-gear option. It also is gonna help out those of you that are looking to you know, gain some insight on how to pull your carrier, whether it's for a Dana 35, a Dana 44, all the basics translate over. And that's what I was talking about in this previous video I made was this one ton swap video series. It's gonna have a ton of good info, whether you're doing this swap or you just wanna learn a little more about Jeep. So stick around. Hopefully uh, this 32 minute video doesn't bug you too much, but a lot of work happened to get him to this point. Let's see how we did it. In this video, we are prepping our axles to you know, pretty much get ready to start the build. Uh, we have to pretty much remove all the factory mounts, anything like this. I've already started, started this a long time ago, but in this video, I'm gonna be cleaning up the axle tubes, grinding all this down so it's nice and smooth. We have to take a little bit of this off, and we're also gonna start the rear axle. Um, as you can tell, this one's already been started a while back, but the rear axle is still pretty much complete. So we're gonna start that one you know, from scrap. But before we actually start grinding everything, it's a good idea to pull the shafts, pull your unit bearings. Um, you can take the knuckles off if you want. I already have the ring gear and carrier removed. And all that does is allow this to be moved around a little bit easier. I built a little axle stand um, with wheels so I can pull this out of my garage when I'm you know, grinding and doing stuff on it. Because uh, these things are extremely heavy, so the lighter you can make them, uh, the easier it's going to be to move around. But we're going to wheel this out there. We're going to start grinding this down um, and prepping it for the truss. Um, so <laughs> there's really no good way to go about this. Um, honestly, it sucks. It's a lot of grinding, a lot of cutting, and a lot of time. But pretty much what we're going to want to do is, you know, get this down to bare bones and uh, hopefully come out with a really good product. So let's do it. All right, so I'm at a pretty good uh, break point. Been out here for about an hour, and as you can tell, there's just metal shavings everywhere. Um, been at it for about an hour, and I finally got this huge cast section uh, where the track bar was ground down. I've been through two grinding discs and three cutoff wheels, so I'm gonna actually have to run to the store and grab some more. But this section over here, uh, right beside the NRC, it's pretty hard to get to, but you know, just keep chipping it away. This side is nice and smooth, and we'll come back uh, later with a flap disc and really get you know any of those little imperfections out and make this nice and smooth. So as you just saw, that was a ton of grinding. I think I spent about five hours yesterday grinding away. And luckily that is pretty much the most of the grunt work uh, for this axle. We still have to go back and, you know, uh, get with a, a sanding disc or flap wheel and clean up all this um, and really, you know, get all this whole tube down to bare metal. I don't want to do that yet though, because the longer this sits here, 
uh, unpainted bare steel, the more likely it is to kind of flash rust. So for now, this is all we're gonna do to the front axle. We're gonna go move to the rear axle and start that. Um, but I will come back later and we're gonna have to prep this even more. Uh, but you know, the rest of the prep work will take less than an hour. So I'm gonna unload this axle off the, uh, off the stands I made here, put it right on the bench and then We'll go tear down the 14 bolt a little bit because I'm pretty sure I'm not gonna be able to put the 14 bolt up here how it sits because that thing is extremely heavy. So let's unload this and go take a look at the 14 bolt and get started on that today. So as this axle sits now, it is way too heavy for me to really move around, let alone pick it up and put it on an axle stand. So we're gonna, you know, kind of disassemble it a little bit. The rotors and calipers aren't there. Uh, didn't come with the axle, so that right there, you know, is about 50 pounds less. We're gonna go ahead and pull the axle shafts. Uh, full float axle shafts are really easy to remove. Um, all we have to do is, let's see, remove all these bolts, and then the shaft is gonna come right out. Um, so being a full float, there's no weight on these axle shafts compared to the JK axle shafts. The axle, it's, the shaft is bolted to the hub, which carries all the weight, which is on the housing. So it's pretty cool. Um, and you can actually remove these if you ever break a shaft and still drive home. Still got gear and gear oil in there, so let me go grab my jug and we're gonna catch some of this gear oil. And pull the shaft out. Nice. Splines aren't twisted or anything, so that's a good sign. Um, I plan on reusing these shafts. These things are plenty strong, and uh, you know, if you do need to replace them, uh, there's you know some chromoly upgrades on the market already. And uh, I mean, you, or you can just go to the junkyard and grab a few spares. They're pretty cheap. Let's go ahead and pull the other one. And uh, I'd say that probably is going to take off about 50 pounds. Something I want to talk about real quick. Removing our carrier and ring gear is going to be beneficial because it's going to make this axle a lot lighter. This gear set is extremely heavy. However, if you don't know if you are going to do the gears or have a shop do the gears for you, I would save the gears for the very last step. Reason I say that is if worst case scenario, we get these axles all ready, they're ready to bolt up under the Jeep. If we still have these factory gears inside, we can possibly drive this uh, to a shop to get re-geared or to your buddy's house that knows what he's doing. Um, so if you don't really know what you're gonna do on the gear side yet, I'd recommend leaving the carrier and pinion in. However, if you do remove the carrier, you will still, you'll still be able to put it back in without adding any shims or anything. But I'll talk about that here once we get the diff cover off. All right, so before we actually pull this carrier out, there's a few things to do that are extremely important in case we need to put this back in uh, before we actually re-gear and install the locker. I've already done them, uh, but you know, for video's sake to make this a little shorter, we are gonna mark our carrier bearing caps. That is this large cap here and this large cap here. We need to put them back in in the future exactly how they are oriented now. So. I recommend when you're doing this is film it on camera or take pictures so you can reference it later. I each use a scr screwdriver and make a marking, um, you know, kind of engraved it up here on the bearing cap. I put L T standing for left top. And over here I put R as in right. And since we know we're only marking the top, that's going to be the top. I also did some other, you know, markings on this side. So once we remove these, we know which sides, which, and which one they're going to go back into. Now these little bolts in the middle of our bearing caps, um, those are the retainers for our adjusters. The adjusters in here on the 14 bolt are what you use to set your carrier preload. Um, instead of using shims, they use these little, uh, you know, collars that actually screw in and out of the axle housing. So before we remove those, we're gonna mark here on the axle housing and make a line inside there on the uh, the adjustment collar. So we know 
if we need to put it back to how it was, all the setup is exactly the same once we line those back up. Now, once we remove all this and we start turning these adjustment collars, we're gonna count how many times we rotate it so we know we can go back if needed. And once again, definitely record all this. So if for some reason you're like, oh crap, I wanna put it together how it was, you can go back, watch your video and see what it did. But let's go see what size these bearing caps are and this little adjustment um, bolt. Let's go grab those. All right, so these are 13 millimeter. We're gonna go pop these off. We're gonna save these, keep them in a nice safe space. So we will put them back on the bearing caps here in a few. We are gonna pull these little retainer clips out, save those as well. And then now pull our bearing caps. Let's see, that looks like it's gonna be a 19. Nope, bigger than that. 21 millimeter works. It's probably standard, but this will work. So pop this off with the impact and then remove the top. All right, so with these off, we're gonna go ahead and put these, um, put this little retainer back in as well as the bolts, just so we don't lose them in the future. We have all this. We simply cannot remove this carrier because it's shimmed nice and tight up in there. So I'm gonna go grab a screwdriver and we are gonna loosen this adjustment collar. So we got our screwdriver. This is the ring gear side and this side is the pinion side just because that's where the pinion sits. I uh, don't remember which way is loosening it. We're gonna see. I feel like that's tightening in it. So we're gonna push it up. There we go. So up is gonna loosen it. As you can tell, it's very easy. Um, to adjust these. And that's the great thing about the 14 bolt axle is it's very easy to set up because we're not pressing on shims and everything. We're just moving these collars and we'll get to that in a future video. But we're gonna rotate it up. I'm gonna do one full turn until we see our marking come back. Where to go? Here it's coming right there. I'm gonna go ahead and mark it again because I can tell that it's already a little bit hard to see. Um, Definitely want to get some deep. Oh, there we go. So now it's clearly marked. Um, one time, let's see if we can pull this out. It still might be a little tight. We'll probably have to get a breaker bar. Oh, there we go. All right. So this thing's heavy. We're going to go ahead and get it ready to put. All right. We're going to loosen it again. One more. and rotate it for the third time. All right, so we rotated it three times and that seems to help out a bunch. Oh. All right, put that over in our uh, oil tray. Oh. And in case we need to reuse uh, this, we're gonna save these bearings and keep them on the correct side. So I'm gonna go ahead and put the, uh, the passenger side on that, and we'll keep this one in here for now. But now that's removed, you can go ahead and tell that's a lot lighter. That's probably, that's probably close to 100 pounds right there with the ring gear and carrier. So now we can tell, get a look at the inside of the 14 bolts. Pretty cool. Huge pinion down there. It's a low pinion axle. Um, in the rear, you low pinion axles are stronger, whereas in the front, high pinion axles are stronger. We're not gonna get into all that. Uh, it's a lot of good stuff on that online, but this is good to go. Um, we could remove the pinion if, if we really wanted to, but right now that's not a huge heavy part of this axle, so we're gonna leave it alone. Okay, I'm not sure why I didn't mention this or even really think about it, but the easiest way to make sure we don't mess up the orientation on these is just to go ahead and put them right back in now. Um, we're not gonna torque down these caps. We're just gonna get it in there and enough so we can get the diff cover on. But this way, we don't lose them, we don't misorient them. It's right there and it's gonna be very easy to remember. Another tip we can do is go ahead and move this back to where we got it from. So we're gonna spin this the opposite way three times. So we are reset up back to where it's one, that's two, 
that's three. All right, so now we can easily remember that we are good to go. Let's go ahead and line this back up, sit it in there. And we didn't touch the pinion side at all, so there's no need um, to mess with that. But only reason I'm telling you guys this is just in case you get some point along in this axle build and you want to put the, you know, stock gears back in, you can. Diff cover's going back on. All right, so it's time to try to get this axle up here on the axle stand. I already tried myself. No way I'm doing it. So we brought a famous special guest onto the show. You probably know her, Cassie from Jeep Gear and Gadgets. Hello, hello. So go ahead and go over to her channel, Jeep Gear and Gadgets, when you're done with this video. Give her a hard time and tell her to start making videos again. She's been, uh, what have you been doing? Working. She's been working. Okay. She's always busy at home working, doesn't have time for videos. So At homework? No, at home working. <laughs> look this Dude, what? Yeah, she's doing homework. She's in high school. All right. All right, right so just look. <laughs> I don't know, word. One, two. Yep. I can't get up there. All right, just hold it. I can't. <laughs> hold it, you got it? I got it, got it. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> oh. oh, man. Do you need to give me this? Yeah, now let's, okay. we need to lift it back up and over and adjust it more. Back up that way? You want, right, to, you wait, want to go that way? Uh, I need to rotate this. All right, let's see. How in the world are we gonna do this? We need to move the whole thing over. Up and over a little bit more. <laughs> okay. Easier. So than done. Boom. All right, everyone. Sorry for the lack of videos from my channel lately. Work has been crazy busy. The weather's been pretty crappy anyway. So I'm gonna get back at it sometime soon. Hopefully at the end of this month. And uh, I'll see you guys later. No, she won't. No, she won't. She's too busy. Jeeps come first. You don't need to go to work. <laughs> I mean, I have, start a, paying me? I have a job and I'm still doing all this, right? <laughs> Actually, I'm not getting paid right now. Government is yeah. shut down. Yeah, so I guess So this is my full-time job, down. guys. Ben from JK Gear Gadgets. I'm doing this full-time, but I still have to go to work and uh, don't collect a paycheck. So help me out with my new full-time job. Go back and watch all my videos. Give them all thumbs up so we can keep these videos going. We're just open up the, you know, the government. That'd be cool. Um, but yeah, now we gotta, you're not, you're not going anywhere, lady. We gotta drag this over there. <laughs> I'm really hoping that this doesn't get stuck in the dirt. Can you, Wait, back why up did the, we... can you back up the Jeep a little bit? We're gonna... <laughs> We're gonna hold, hold, if this what? axle cover breaks, I'm gonna be heck of pissed. What do I... I don't, um, know, I don't even know what you want me to do here. Just kind of... Just... Oh, we're good. Oh, it's sinking. We're almost there. We made it. All right, so before um, Cassie goes and moves the car, we are going to stuff these axle tubes with rags, just so we don't get a bunch of crap up in there, and then start cutting these brackets off. Um, there's a bunch of different ways to do that. The cheapest way is just gonna be to get a grinder, and you know, right here where these welds are, just cut as close as you can to those, grind all the brackets off. We're cutting the uh, the bump stop pad, the spring pad, and the shock brackets, and that's pretty much it. Um, we can remove these e-brake cables or leave them because uh, we will kind of reuse those. These brake lines, we are not reusing those, um, so we could just take the bolts off. I uh, don't really have to cut it. You know, I like to keep all this old stuff in my shed just in case somebody on Facebook's like, oh, does anybody happen to have one of these? I'm like, yeah, I do, 20 bucks. Ha. Personally, I am going to just plasma cut these brackets off just because it's the quickest and easiest way, but I know everybody doesn't have access to a plasma cutter. So in that case, grind them off and we're just going to make this nice and smooth. Brackets like this are going to go and uh, that's really it. This actual isn't as complicated uh, to really clean up opposed to the uh, front, but let's do it. So as you can tell, that plasma cutter really made it easy to cut all these brackets off. Only downside is that we have very jagged cuts and you really can't get as close to the axle tubing uh, as you could with a grinder, just because you don't want to get too close and start digging into the tubing. If you do and you know, end up, whether it's grinding or plasma cutting, cut a little bit too much of the axle tube off, it's really not a big deal because before we weld the truss on, you can come in and weld any of those holes that you, you know, cut too deep in and uh, you know, grind them smooth. So no big deal there. You just don't want to cut all the way through it. That'd be horrible. 
So we're gonna have to go through and clean all this up with a grinder. But one thing I wanna talk about real quick is how to uh, remove these e-brake cables. It's pretty simple. Um, no magic here. All we're gonna do is push this spring down if we can. I already did it on the other side. It's pretty easy. Um, there we go. Push this spring down out of the way and there's two little indentions you push in kind of push that side up and then do it again on the back side with a little flat head and once those are pushed in we should be able to pull this up oh man we're almost there pull the cable up and slide it out of the bracket and then simply unhook it down here um, pull the spring out of the way again. And it pops off. So we are going to save what we have um, of the e-brake cables because we will use this lower half later on once we're setting up our e-brake again. Uh, previous owner of this axle cut it, uh, probably just to remove it from a junkyard or the truck easily. But we just want to keep these ends and this spring and this. Um, later on, we can do some magic working in order to make this e-brake work with the JK. But once again, that is later on. So we have that removed. We are good to go. We're going to clean up this axle. So as you can tell, nighttime, working into the night once again. But we are racket free on this axle and the front Super Duty. Man, I'd never want to do this again. Um, <laughs> that is so much grinding. I think I probably have 10 hours into grinding, but what I will say is go ahead and get a bigger grinder. <laughs> go on Amazon or Harbor Freight and get a big old grinder. Don't use a little four and a half inch because it just takes forever. I really wish I would have done that, but we still have to go through and clean up all this grinding. Um, I'm probably gonna do that tonight on the rear axle. Just since it's already out here, um, we're gonna use a little flap disc and uh, clean it up. This one's actually kind of an old flap disc, but we'll go through this and then finish cleaning this up. But one thing I will say is you're gonna have to stock up on grinding disc and cutoff discs. Uh, there's, you know, some of the ones I went through, as you can tell, it's a ton, but as you can tell, I have a big old stack of benchmark abrasive um, flap discs. These are actually from Facebook. Uh, if you check out their Facebook page, I always saw these things pop up on my uh, my timeline. It was like a sponsored post, like an ad, and it said free, um, you know, free grinding discs if you pay for shipping. So I was like, you know what, I, I'm gonna need these. Got a big old project coming up, so I tried it out. I used the coupon code and I got those um, for free. I think I paid like. It was like 10 bucks for shipping for three of these stacks. I've already used a bunch of them, but if you see those pop up on your uh, Facebook feed, definitely get them, great deal. Um, so big shout out to Benchmark Abrasives for running that uh, deal on Facebook. But we're gonna go ahead and uh, smooth this axle tube down. I uh, don't really want to do too much. I'm pretty much just going to do the spots where I actually grinded. Uh, just smooth it out with this. And then to remove the paint on the axle, I just had this open. We are going to use, where'd it go? This right here. Um, I got this at Harbor Freight. It's a polycarbide abrasive wheel. And this is really good for removing paint and rust without actually digging in to the, uh, into the metal. So this is what we're going to go and hit at the very, very end on both axles. But I'm gonna clean up those grinding marks uh, with this flap disc. Last night, finally finished up grinding all the welds and brackets off both axles. We still do have to do one more additional step and really prep this axle to a nice weldable and paintable surface. So as you can tell on this side, it is extremely clean. Uh, these are a few spots I was talking about with the, you know, in case you nick it, we'll go back later and weld these in and grind them smooth, but that's gonna come once we actually start working on our swap, uh, the truss kits. But as you can tell this side, you can see where I grinded and then you can see that there's a bunch of paint left over. Now, if we left it like this, sure, we could weld the truss on and then repaint, but it's gonna give a really weird texture look if we paint over this, because you'll see the, you know, the layers of paint. So what I did is cleaned up the axle tubing really, really good. And this is what I was talking about earlier with this polycarbide abrasive wheel. Um, 
Go ahead and get a few of these at Home Depot or Lowe's or whatever. And this stuff is really good because it takes off the paint, it takes off any surface rust, but it does not dig into the metal. I'm not gonna really worry uh, too much about the actual uh, diff portion. I'm mostly just gonna clean up the tubes, kind of mimic like this one. I mean, that's that's beautiful. Uh, do it on this side of the axle tube and then over on the front Dana 60 as well. Now that we have the tubes prepped and pretty much ready for the truss to go on, I'm actually gonna go ahead and put a layer of paint on. Now, the reason I'm doing this is so it does not flash rust, but also so when we put the truss on and weld it on, there's already a layer of paint underneath the truss because once we weld on a truss, it's gonna be really hard to get all that bare metal painted underneath the truss. So I picked up a bunch of Steel It. Uh, what this stuff is, is it's a stainless steel spray paint that used to only make gray or silver and now they make black and as you can tell it's anti-corrosive and the big thing about this is that it's weldable so we can spray these tubes and without grinding the paint off just weld right on top of it so this is going to be an awesome option for you guys that are doing this swap or any other projects on your jeep um you can just spray paint it it's i mean we'll see the durability of it i'm actually doing a test with all different types of spray paints now whether or not this will be the final coat i'm not sure but we're gonna lay one coat down just to prevent any flash rusting and then uh, also have that bottom layer under the truss and uh, i'm excited to see how well this welds um you know i've never actually used this stuff before and welded on it so that'll be pretty cool but let's put a nice thin layer down just to stop this from rusting and keeping it you know definitely a good nice surface Ooh, this stuff is strong let me tell you that wow it smells like a print shop since the 14 bolt is drying now with that paint I'm gonna try to manhandle the 60 and bring it out here so we can start some of the prep work while that's drying Honestly, not that bad. Our next step on the front axle is going to be to cut off this little lip right here that's on the inner C. Reason being is our coil spring is gonna sit right here. So this lip would really interfere um, anytime we wanna remove or install our coil spring. A lot of the swap kits uh, keep this on, but it does make it harder to put your springs on. So it's easier just to cut it off. I use a Sawzall and I just chopped it right off. And if we need to trim it back even more, we can grab the grinder and cut it back some more. But we'll go ahead and cut this side too. I got a Sawzall and a really long blade. It's a 12 inch blade for metal just because I don't want to blow through like five short blades cutting through this much metal. That's very thick. So let's go ahead and cut this down. Just finished up doing the last bit of grinding on this front axle. I had to take down a bunch here on the lower section. It's actually flipped over right now, but I really wanted to make it as smooth as possible for all the ground clearance. So I know you guys are tired of seeing me grind and grind and grind, and trust me, I am tired too. But you really wanna make this axle as smooth as possible. So, I mean, I took off a, probably about an inch right here. Um, under the back here, there's still a little bit of, you know, jagged corners, but since it's the underneath side, let me just flip it around. It doesn't really matter as much because that is not going to be in the way of any rocks or anything else. I just really wanted to get this as high as possible because before it was sitting down about here. So time to clean up this axle, but I want to show you guys what this, uh, steel it looks like. It's very, it's a nice satin and it actually dried really quick. Um, I still have to go in and welding these holes, but that's the great thing about this steel it is that now the tubes are painted, they're not gonna rust, and I can still come back and weld right on top of this apparently. So we'll see in a few video episodes from now, when we, or maybe the next one, when we start welding the trusses on, we'll see how well this paint you know, does with 
welding. Uh, if it doesn't do too good, we can easily hit it right back off, but this is dry and the paint definitely has a nice finish to it. Looks like a brand new axle. This is such a beautiful sight. Finally finished. We are ready to hit it with the steel it. This is gonna be like a 30 minute video. Hopefully you guys are still watching. Go down in the comments and let me know if you're still watching. It'd be, uh, it'd be great. Maybe we can do a giveaway for some steel it. I bought two cases of it, so I don't know. Maybe in the next video, we'll see how this works. We might do a giveaway for it. Let me know if you would uh, be interested in winning some steel it. This stuff's like 25 bucks a can, so it's no joke. But let's paint it, get this thing looking pretty. finally done as you just saw that was a ton of work leading up to this point but i really think this just turned out a beautiful outcome the axles no longer look like junkyard axles they look like axles that are just ready to be built so here's the final front the dana 60 as you can tell we shaved this inner c right there um i know a lot of people are probably going to question ben why'd you trim that uh c there on the jk's you know people add c gussets well these C's are already humongous. And that little piece we cut off was not a structural part. It was actually where the coil spring bucket for the Super Duties went. So we just trimmed that out to work with the JK better. This section right here is nice and smooth. Radius of the housing is smooth. And honestly, this paint looks amazing. So I'm super excited to uh, weld onto it and see what it does. 14 bolt, same deal, pretty much ready to go, ready to get the truss welded on. After I fix some of these little spots where I accidentally dug too deep uh, grinding the brackets off, but it looks pretty nice. There's a little bit of waves right here, but the truss is gonna sit right on top of here where those old brackets were. Sure, I could spend another hour or two really getting this nice, but in the end, I don't think it's gonna be worth it because the truss is gonna be covering it. Next video series, or the next episode of the video series, I have yet to be determined. I'm either gonna start the swap kits or we're gonna do something special to this rear end. I think I'm gonna go with that route first just because it's nice to get that done before we weld the truss on, but you'll see. So stay tuned for more videos. Um, this one was kind of a pain in the butt just because it was a ton of grinding, not too many technical things going on other than removing the gear set. Um, you know, follow that, I would do it exactly how I did it. And like I said, record yourself so in the future you don't have any issues. But the next upcoming videos are gonna get a lot more technical and you'll see that there's a lot more that's gonna start going into this swap other than just cleaning them up. So stay tuned, give this video a thumbs up guys. Like always, if you have any questions, go down in the comments, let me know, I'll be more than happy to talk about it or try to answer your questions. And if you wanna get in on a Steal It giveaway, let me know. I don't know how we're gonna do it, probably do it in the next video or so, but stay tuned for that. Thanks guys, peace.